Hi students, we ran out of time yesterday, um, Thursday, to really get into Illustrator, so I wanted to um, show you how you're going to be doing your teapot exercise. And the first thing that we're going to do is open Illustrator, and then we're going to go to File, New. A lot of the uh, things that you'll see here are similar to InDesign. For example, um, I can immediately name my document, I'm going to call it Teapot. I can choose to make my document a print document, a web profile document, I can use mobile and devices. Basically the difference here is that for print it's going to make my um, document a CMYK document at 300 pixels per inch. If I choose web it's now RGB at 72 so we're just gonna stick with print. And don't worry about the size we'll just use a letter size piece of paper we can change it later. Now what you're seeing is really similar to InDesign. In InDesign this would be called a page and we would start putting things on it. Um, in Illustrator, this is called an artboard. So, if we need to change the size of our art, art excuse me, our artboard, we're going to look for um, anything that says artboard, not page, like InDesign has. Now, first thing that we need to do is go to File, Place, and place our teapot picture. This is going to put it on our page, and I'm just going to move it up to the top because it's a little easier for me to see. Now, I really need to talk to you guys about how we look at things on our computer screen. Um, the more efficient you are at just looking, the better your work is going to be. So right now we're in the sort of artboard view where we can see the entire artboard. There's a few different things that we can do in order to zoom in on what we're working with and when you're tracing you definitely want to get as close as possible to what you're dealing with um, so that you can see that you're tracing it correctly. So of course we can use the sliders I probably have never <laughs> used sliders in Illustrator before, but we could, and a lot of you guys will do that because that's how you're used to using other programs is the sliders. The best way to look is really to avoid these sliders and to use a couple different ways of zooming in and out. One option that we have is the magnifying glass over here, the zoom tool. I can click on it, and then if I click on what I want to look at, it'll make it bigger. I can also click and hold my mouse and draw a box around what I want to see really large. The other option I have is the hotkeys. We can press command minus and just hold those at the same time. So I'm going to press command and then hit minus and then hit minus again and then hit minus again and I'm zooming out. And then I can zoom in by pressing command plus and now I'm pressing command plus again, command plus again. Um, you can actually just hold command. I'm holding command with my thumb and I'm pressing minus once, minus once, minus once, plus once, plus again, plus, and I'm not letting go of command at all. Um, and this is going to let me zoom in and out. Now, when you use the hotkeys, you aren't um, able to control exactly what you zoom in on. And that's where spacebar comes in. If I press and hold spacebar, my cursor turns into a little hand. And if I hold spacebar with my left hand and I use my right hand on my mouse, now I've zoomed in quite a bit. In fact, I'm so zoomed in that all I can see is the teapot. So what I can do is press Command-0, and it's going to give me a view of the entire artboard, which is great for if you're working with something really small and you're really zoomed in and you want to see how it looks in the overall design. So I'm going to start by zooming in on my teapot. I'm going to change to my black selection tool click on my teapot, I can tell it's selected because I have these boxes, um, these small little boxes around the frame that the teapot's in. I'm going to change the opacity to, I'm going to use 50. You can use whatever you want. Um, in fact, if you click here, you get a slider and you can start to um, change it using the slider and just pick a level that you're comfortable with. I'm going to stick with 50. The reason we want it to be somewhat transparent is because we're going to be drawing a line around it and the teapot's black. So if we're drawing a black line on top of black, it can be hard to tell um, what is our line and what is the teapot underneath. The next thing that I need to do is um, go down here to my color palette and the default is for anything that I draw to have a white inside and a black line around it. We don't want any insides. Um, we did this in class, just click on the white fill and make it clear. Now, we're going to use the, ten, the pen tool. We could use the pencil tool. Um, we could sort of draw around our teapot, but that's really messy. It's very difficult to do with a mouse. In fact, 
um, when I let go and it makes the line, this line is horrible. It's really wonky. It doesn't really line up with the teapot. I'm going to press Apple Z or Control. Um, I'm sorry, Command Z. A lot of times I say Apple because the Command key used to have a picture of an apple on it. So old people like me were used to saying Apple Z, um, but now it's Command Z. So Apple and Command are the same thing. So I'm going to press Command Z and undo what I just did. I love computers because just Apple Z it. If you screw up, press Apple Z and it'll be fun. Um, I'm going to grab my pen tool. If I click and hold on my pen tool, I see that I have a couple different options. Pen tool, or I can add an anchor, delete an anchor, or convert an anchor. That will make more sense as we start to draw a line, but you want to start here with the regular pen tool. I'm still pretty zoomed out, so I'm going to press Command Plus a couple times, tracing around like, like you did with the pencil. We're dropping anchor points, so I'm going to click my mouse just once and let go. So click and let go, and that has created a point. Click and let go and I've made another point and the pen tool connected the two with this black line. So I can keep doing this and honestly I could do that around my teapot but it's not going to look very good because it's a bunch of straight lines. It's going to look kind of wonky. So um, I'm going to delete this and show you how to make curved lines. So straight lines, just click and release, click and release, click and release, and it's going to make straight lines. If I want to make a curved line, I'm going to click and I'm going to hold the mouse down. So click and hold, and it didn't make a line. It made this blue line instead of a black one. And the blue line is telling me where it's going to make a black one as soon as I let go. But until I let go, I haven't really put a line there. And so what you're seeing is that I have these two things coming off the left and right side of my anchor point called handles. And what the handles do is they allow you to control the curve of the line that you're making. So the further I move the handle from my original anchor point, the more um, severe the curve gets. And then I can also move the handle in a circle and it'll change what part of the line is curved. So if I move the handle over here, the curve goes to the right. If I move the handle over here, the curve goes to the left. Now what's important to notice here is see how the curve after our straight line, it swoops down to the left and then back to the right and it touches my anchor point and the line is going to stop at the anchor point, but the next time I drop a point, it's going to sort of follow where my handle is and this will make more sense. So see if I let go, the line only goes to the anchor point, but see where this handle is, see how it comes out this way? The next time I drop a point and make a curve, the curve is going to follow this handle for a little bit. See that? See how it followed? that handle for a little bit and then made a curve. And the reason that it did that is because Illustrator wants this curve to be really nice. It wants it to sort of flow from like curve left and then comes down here and curves right. So um, I didn't put handles on this path, I'm sorry, this anchor because I just clicked and let go. So there's no handles, so the curve, it just made a corner. This has a handle, so the next time I make a curve, it's gonna follow the handle for a little bit Let's say I put a point here, it's going to follow this and then come down here and see if I click and hold, that's exactly what it did. But if I let go, see how there's no handles on this one? So the next time I make a point, it's not going to have a curve to this um, anchor. It's just going to be straight. So go ahead and you can sort of practice with that and see how it works. Again, the next time I put an anchor, it's going to go along this handle for a little bit and sort of get a feel for what it's like to make a curve. I'm going to go ahead and start making the teapot, um, tracing the teapot, so I'm going to get my pen tool. I'm going to click and drop for the original anchor, and I'm going to click and hold and make a curve. Now, remember how when we use handles, the next time we make an anchor point, it follows along this curve? So this curve, it's going to come here, it's going to follow along the handle for a little bit, and then come down here. Sometimes you want that. But here, it's not going to work for me because the curve is going to follow this. So if I put a line here, well, actually, it kind of works for this one. We'll get up here, over here. If I were to put a point here, it would follow this curve and it would go whoop and then come up. And see, that's exactly what happened. So I'm going to press Apple Z. And I'm going to Apple Z again because I don't want this handle to be here. So when I make this curve, what I can do is I can click and hold make the curve, and when I get the curve how I want it, 
so it's lined up with the teapot. I'm going to press Alt, which is also the Option key. And now look, now I'm not changing the curve anymore, I'm changing the handle. So I'm going to put the handle where I want the next line to go. Because remember, the next line is going to follow along the handle a little bit. So I'm going to put the handle here. And now when I make a point, it comes up here instead of going this way like the other one did. And I'm going to do it here as well because um, I don't want the curve to come out along this handle. So I'm going to click and hold and I'm going to make the curve how I want it. When I have the curve how I want it, I'm going to press Option and now I'm going to put the handle follow along, following along the curve of this teapot. Now I'm going to press Spacebar and I'm going to move so I can get a better view of this lid. So I'm just going to go around. Here's another example. I don't want the next curve to come down along this. See, the next curve is going to sort of follow that, and that's not right. So I'm going to Apple Z, and when I make this curve, I'm going to get it where I want it, and then I'm going to press Option, and I'm going to put this handle where the next line should go. Sometimes the handle is already sort of where you want it, so you don't have to press Option. So I'm just going to trace around this, and if you do it, but if you screw up just a little bit, um, like right here, it's not perfect. I can fix that later. And you want to um, have sort of um, an idea of whether your line can be long or short. See, if I try and do a long line here, I'm not going to be able to match the curve. It's going to be too difficult. So I want to do sort of a medium length line. Okay, so I have my point connected, my last anchor point. I connected it up to the first anchor point and now I have a complete shape. And I say to you guys all the time, just look. Just look at what you've done. See if it looks right. A lot of design is really just sitting and looking and making sure things work and that they look the right way. So now that I'm zoomed in pretty close, I'm just going to look and make sure that my line matches my teapot. And I can already see some problems. So what I can do is click on my white arrow tool, click on the path, and now I can start to see the anchors that I made and I can change them. And I can click the anchor and move the anchor and that will move the whole line. I didn't want to do that really, so I'll press command. So now I can start to clean this up a little bit and change the curves and you know change where the lines are and get it to start looking a little better. And you just have to be patient with it and work with it. Now see this point right here? It Now another thing I can do is go to my pen tool, click on it and hold it, and I can add an anchor. So it's not one that I made originally, I just added it. And that's going to help me make this curve a little bit better. So just take a minute to go around and look and make sure everything looks good and all the lines look straight. This one looks kind of weird. And this one right here, see it's kind of wonky? Just going to straighten that out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to press Apple Z. And now if I click on my teapot picture and press delete, it's gone and I just have the outline. I'm not going to worry about the handle, we'll do that in class. I'm just going to go to File save as, and let's save it as an Illustrator file, so .ai, which is this option right here. Save it to the desktop. Go ahead and choose CS5. If you're using CS4 or 3, you can still go ahead and save it as 
you know, whichever version comes up, you can open it in class. Just hit OK and bring that to class Tuesday. If you have any questions, please let me know. I can always, um, you know, explain anything to you over email or I can make you a video. Um, let me know if you have any questions and good luck.